to the unofficial Disney Tonight Show podcast. Please give it up for my dear friend and your host, Mr. David Studebaker. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you, James. Uh, Mickey is a big fan. He thinks we're hilarious. He's laughing. Uh, (laughs) This is very exciting. Our guest there is the incredible pop singer Myra. She was the first Latina artist to ever be signed to Disney Records. Uh, I, if you are familiar with the, the banger, Miracles Happen, that is her song uh, from Prince, Princess Diaries, which I know Luke watched on repeat his entire, like all, <laughs> the entire, like 2001 to 2010 was just Princess Diaries all the time for him. We also have, you may notice, Jake looks a little different tonight. Uh, <laughs> he, uh, there was a scheduling issue and our dear friend and a, and a TikTok trivia night dominator, Alma has <laughs> stepped in. We are very excited to have her. She rocks. And then Mando, Luke, James, you know, the crew. We love you. Great to see you guys. Uh, I'm going to stop blabbing and I'm just going to (laughs) say thank you, Myra. Give her a hand. Woo! Thank you. Thank you guys for having me. I was just saying how awesome it is to have so many faces on here. I want to dig in quickly on music videos because music videos of that era, I just find so wonderful so the first thing i gotta ask you the music video to dancing in the street from recess schools out you had more costume changes than a share concert like there was so many con- like i couldn't believe and and so my question is because i also do filmmaking and i know typically for those they make you do like the full choreography in each outfit did you genuinely have to do like full choreo because i mean were there like 19 days? It was crazy. I love that you paid that close attention because I feel like not enough people know the type of work that goes behind these, you know, whether it's videos or movies or whatever it is, you know, it's a lot of work. I mean, I learned a lot, obviously, through that experience, but it was it was definitely a lot of changes. And through every every outfit, I had to redo you know, the dance, the choreography, uh, basically everything. It was like over and over. I want to say it was three days of it. Okay, that's what I was going to ask. I was like, that could not have been done in one day. And I will tell you, I hope you're not as sweaty as me because you already look, I got the the pit sweats already. And I'm sitting in a chair on a Zoom. Like if I had to do, because you, I mean, you were like really dancing. And then those backup dancers too, like all of you guys, deserve some sort of like fitness award for, for finishing. You know that. what? I was all, I was honestly always in awe of the dancers through that experience with dancing in the street, because man, they, i I was more proud of them than I could have been of me because <laughs> yes, I danced, but I wasn't doing that type of dancing. You know what I mean? Like I had very, I had a lot of choreography, but but you were, were really... singing and kind of doing the hand motions right and, yeah right so i was but a little bit more like, laid you know... back yeah <laughs> i mean there was even a i remember one of the guys was even doing like um break dancing and yeah. like you yeah. know so flips in the air and i mean all these acrobatic <laughs> things and i was just like wow these kids really they really I'll, have it in i'll there. bet you yeah. i'll bet you those dancers when they you know they came in to shoot it and they saw like your wardrobe and they saw the amount of outfits. They're like, really? Like, I gotta, I gotta do, like, can't we just choose three of them and do that? <laughs> they definitely were. And you know, they were troopers because they, they through the, out the, you know, the days we were filming, they were so great and they were so happy to be there. And it was, you know what it was, to be honest, it was like a party. It oh. was truly like a party. And we were all just having so much fun that it was like, we kind of, you know, at one point, didn't want the party to end. It was sad when it ended. Yeah. You know, it was super sad. It was like, really, we're done dancing? Like, this is it? <laughs> yeah. That's my dog. He wants to be on. Okay. You want to be, you want to come on. This is live TV, baby. Okay. Buster wants to say. Oh, Hi, Buster. Yeah. Oh, you. Oh, you. I love God. it. Uh, so uh, my other music video question also was for, for Miracles Happen. That was in that, that genre where... You had to act like you were having the most fun that you like that boardwalk 
And that like amusement park you were at was like, there's never been more fun had in, in their <laughs> life. Was that hard to like keep up that level of smile and, and, and happiness? Honestly, you know, uh, when we got to the Miracles Happen shooting, I was way more tired. I had started um, doing a lot of gigs. We were kind of all over the place, you know, traveling everywhere. And so having to step back from, from uh, the traveling part and, and the gigging um, and coming back to just like filming this new video for, for the Princess Diaries, it was, I was tired. And it was like, almost like during the breaks, I couldn't even do schoolwork. I literally would fall asleep on my books. Plus I'm gonna add, I'm not the greatest actress. Like I've always said that 110%. I am a vocalist. I love what I do. I was, I was born a singer, you know? So I don't give myself that acting credit. It's just, it's not my thing. And so if for some reason it's more work, you know? And, and so with that being said, it's more like, really, can I just go back on tour and sing? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, this is and- making me fall asleep. And for those of you who want, if you go to uh, Myra's YouTube page, uh, Myra Official Music, you can see how much forced good time she's having in that video. <laughs> like it is, no, like just no, I, 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 no one's had that good of a time doing any. Like maybe if they were giving you like twenty million dollars, and it's like you know, but it was, it was very funny. But it's a great. I mean, you did an amazing job, uh, and yeah. I wouldn't think you weren't a good actor because. It takes acting chops to be able to, especially when you're like burnt out from the road. I mean, you know, before COVID, I would go on the road and do shows and stuff. And I know that feeling of when you're burnt right. out and then someone's like, okay. And you're like, no, really? Action. <laughs> Can't yeah. we do like a moody music video, you know? We... <laughs> How old were you when you signed to Disney Records? I was 13 years old. Wow. Um, wow. Now I'm... 34. I was going to say, you don't have to share your age. Uh, so. Okay. <laughs> you, don't have to... you look amazing, <laughs> though. Yeah, you Thank look wonderful. You. you do. Thank you. We all do. I see all your beautiful faces. Mando's helmet hasn't aged a day. It's amazing. I don't know what sort of skin regimen you use, but it really, it's fabulous. I need that. <laughs> what was that like, though, like rising to prominence that young in life? Because I mean, when I was 13, there was no one would want to see my face in a music video or sing or anything. Um, and I can't even imagine just how you would able, you were able to manage that level of, of kind of ego boost. You know, it was it was a lot to to handle. It was a lot to go through and um, and be a part of. But I'd been singing since I was five. My parents wouldn't really take me serious. Then I turned around eight, nine years old and I continued in school with like every play you could think of. I was like lead singer in the choir and eventually uh, because my roots are Latina, um, I'm I'm Mexican American, very, very proud of that. Uh, First generation here in in the United States. And I got to say, it's, it's, it's a proud thing, you know? So I had the opportunity to start out with mariachi music. And after some time of my parents kind of really helping me out when I turned nine, I remember getting real serious with my dad. Like, hey dad, you know, this is what I want to do. And I'm sure of it for the rest of my life. And then making that transition from, you know, from mariachi music to the pop world, becoming Disney's first artist ever signed. It was quite a crazy jump you know, to go from school plays to, you know, being, being Disney's first artist signed and recording artists and having all these amazing experiences with them. Um, I know that most people are familiar with the Mickey Mouse Club and, uh, and Christine Aguilera being a part, Justin Timberlake being a part, Britney Spears being a part back when, right? But I mean, that was before even me. So when I came along and it was like a, it was like, boom, you know, we want to, rec- we want to have a, an actual recording artist and move from being just soundtrack based to an actual recording label, you know, where we take an artist. And to, so to be a part of that movement and, and just that whole change for them, honestly, I mean, aside from it being history for me, it was crazy. It was a crazy time. And, and so pure, just real good childhood memories. But I mean, as far as having that, that pressure and, um, you know, being the first artist and whatnot. And then on top of that, it's like, okay, 
you know, not just the first artist, but I'm a Latina. So it's like, I had to show a bit more like, oh God, is it, is it Spanish or is it English? Like, where are we going with this? You know, <laughs> I guess we're doing both, you know? So it was, it was a lot of pressure. And I mean, even then I remember having a bit of an accent. Spanish is my first language. So having to transition, it was, there was a lot of pressure. And as far as just wanting to sound right and representing you know, both my Mexican American side the right way. So, I mean, here I am so many years later and I think I got my English down pretty well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Sounds and, perfect. And, it, and it's funny you mentioned having fun because what was your tour like with the, the infamous Aaron Carter? You know what? Um, it was a blast. We were kids. Um, I actually feel like in a way we were raised together in in the music scene just because we were so young and we were all together for a long time just really you know traveling the world um on stage sometimes doing three gigs a day wow. um literally waking up every day to a new city and as kids being that young and uh, and and having this world you know it's it's a different world completely from you just going to school you know and, and a lot of people don't know how hard it truly is sometimes to be away from like your loved ones and for me personally I was away from my mom at one point and my sisters my siblings um for about a year wow. you know so I didn't get to see age, my mother it's tough. it was super tough I have to say so I mean who becomes your family is the people that you're on the road with you know and and um, I became really, really close to Leslie, who's Aaron's sister, may she rest in peace. And um, I mean, we became best of friends. I actually recently got her name. I don't know if you could see that, but I got her Aww. name tattooed wow. on me with the little halo on there and some music notes just because she's that part of my life, you know? And, um, and she was very, will forever be super special to me. With that being said, um, Aaron, Back then, I mean, if you remember clearly, he was the Bieber of that time. Yeah. You yeah. know, he oh, yeah, was he the Justin was Bieber. Um, with of, Shaq and, you know, do, yeah. doing the, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it was a lot of fun. I mean, he always made everything super, super fun. And um, my heart goes out to him because he's been through so much, you know, and not just him, um, a lot of the people in the same bubble growing up in this industry as, as young kids, you go through a lot of things. You, you experience a lot of things. I, I like to think of myself as, you know, first and foremost, I'm a human, we all are. And so before anything and before any performance or any, um, any goals and talent that we may have, um, we're human. So we go through so much, just trying to kind of find a balance. And so that's my family. It's still my family. And, and I love them to pieces, every single one of them. Um, well, we've been through a just lot. Si since you know the Carters, mm -hmm. if you could just make sure uh, Nick Carter stays away from my wife, that was her like <laughs> crush. Uh, and apparent, you know, I don't want, I don't need the competition. Okay, so just I know. make sure oh, ma so make sure he stays harsh. away. <laughs> yeah, he 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 can he can you know I love the Backstreet Boys. I'm not ashamed. I'm not one of those Backstreet Boy haters. I love the Backstreet Boys, but you know Nick. Nick's got to stay away from Tina. That's all I'm going to say. I will pass the message on. Okay? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, because I know, I know he's, I mean, he keeps hitting me up, trying to hang out and like, you know, he wants to help watch my kid. Thank you, Mando. Yeah, you've got my back. Uh, so speaking of the touring, Luke, I think you have a question for Myra. Yeah, I was, I was interested in um, if, do you have like a, a performance or a venue that you performed at that like really stuck out for you and that was like very memorable to you? I love your guys' questions, by the way. Um, <laughs> mainly the performances that that stuck and that I always remember are the ones where I know for a fact I made a difference, you know? And I mean, there, I remember um, being at the UNICEF in New York City. Uh, there was a huge event. A lot of people, you know, Bill Gates, Melinda Gates, um, Nelson Mandela, you know, was a highlight for me that night. And, um, and he gave me a standing ovation. And so wow. I remember also, 
I grew up with uh, with Hillary, Hillary Duff, Lizzie McGuire, you know, and so we all kind of grew up in the same bubble. So she was there as well. She was actually the host of the night. Mm-hmm. Having Nelson Mandela giving me his standing ovation was just mm-hmm. kind of like that type of moment where it's just like, did that really happen? And the funny thing <laughs> is that I didn't even know it happened because I was blinded by the spotlight. There was like oh, yeah. two mean old spotlights on me. <laughs> and so I couldn't really see what was happening. And and when they told me, I, I ran off stage after I was done. You know, I did my thing. I sang my three songs. I Not to mention, I had a three a 300 piece orchestra of children oh, wow. from Argentina <laughs> wow. behind me. That's... Yes, yes. So That's quite it was a like gig. a show. <laughs> It was incredible. It was a show for kids by kids. You know what I mean? And so to me, to me, that was like one of the things that I'll never forget. And not just so much because of the standing ovation. I thought that part was kind of funny because they rushed me back on stage. Like, do you know who just stood up for you? You know, and I'm like, like, no, I can't. You're like, no, I can't see anything. I've had a spotlight in my my eyes. Yeah, totally. So when they told me that, of course, I ran back out, I, you know, did another bow and and I just it was uh one of those things where I'll never forget that and and the other shows where I was able to give back to uh, children with cancer um I was a part of the wish foundation uh many times where we you know had events or I was called on for last wishes etc and um there's another foundation it was a uh, backstage for a cure I mean there was just it was endless foundations and just people that came together to to give back and so for me being called on to do those shows yeah the other shows were great six flags and all the fairs and malls all over the world etc there is i mean my biggest show i want to say was like an eighty thousand people show nonetheless the shows that beat all of those shows are the ones where i felt like you know what tonight touched my heart because i was able to do something bigger than me and bigger than whatever this is that we're doing because we're only here for a limited time you know and so to know that you have those type of opportunities and you can make a little difference to me that's been the real miracle of my journey that's That's beautiful that's That's, that's beautiful yeah i know and i mean nelson mandela standing ovation that's like all you even need for like there like there's no beating that like (laughs) What do, you, what do you get? Maybe like Martin Luther King Jr. standing ovation. Maybe that like, but it's it's tough to be. It's tough to. That's incredible. That is a. It's gonna be tough for future guests. Luke's gonna have to ask that question to future guests and see if anyone can oh, top man. that. Because right now you are you are uh, in the, the leaderboard. Lead. Yeah. Um, yes. So just as I was starting stand up, um, I toured with a pop band where I would like open for them and they did some like like award shows in LA and all that but it was so weird to kind of step into that of like kind of the lower level of the music industry of you know like there's a lot of those like award shows that aren't really award shows right. and a lot of those just like and also kind of like predatory award <laughs> shows like were you kind of because you were you know so quickly were in a very legit realm of the disney realm so there's a certain protection there but were you like aware of that when you were younger of like oh there's some like weird people who i kind of <laughs> should stay away from <laughs> you know what i come from a really really close family like we're really tight i always had my father and my oldest brother on the road with me always oh that's they were smart. always okay. with me well, yeah. yes <laughs> and so very then. smart because <laughs> to say the least as you mentioned there are weirdos out there you Why have she the looking industry. at me when she says this <laughs> no i'm not no i'm not no Feeling glanced, like. she's very she's very perceptive she's very perceptive (laughs) no and then you add the industry i couldn't believe realistically how many weird things would be happening around and and luckily i was always that you know um mexican little girl who was always protected by her father and you know despite my turbulence uh, along the way uh with my career because there's been a lot of um I've been so protected and I've been able to, I'm able to say today, you know what, because of my father protecting that side of me and my family, my, my siblings and my mother, um, I'm whole. And so um, I have them to thank for that part of, of not 
really being exposed in that way. You know what I mean? But, but I mean, like I said, I love your questions. They're very raw. They're very real. <laughs> and, and I mean, it's true. I remember, I got to say this really quick, just because it, one of the things that really freaked me out was I remember um, going from city to city on my tour bus. And obviously we always followed each other, whether it was, it was a bunch of buses, you know, sometimes it was even the factory boys and all of us together um, in our own buses, but we were following each other, whether it was Aaron, a teens at the time, my Leslie, um, sometimes Leslie would jump on my bus and it was, a, it was fun, so much fun. Uh, but then we'd end up um, waking up to a different city, you know, every morning. And I remember a few times where my dad had to cover me because there was this one guy, this creepy guy that was like really old and just following us around. And, um, and so, you know, you don't know the motive. You don't know. It just doesn't feel right. It's a weird yeah. vibe. And so obviously my father, you know, being the Mexican man, I guess you can kind of compare him to Selena's dad. You know, he's got that. I don't know if you've seen the movie, but that's my father, you know? And, and so it's, it's that cultural background, you know, where you like- You couldn't hire a better bodyguard than that, yeah. than that guy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> definitely, definitely. So having my father there, always protecting me and making sure that I'm good along with my oldest brother, um it's like my two bestest man friends you know that i could yeah. ever have wow. no that's a truly a blessing that really I love is that. wonderful i mean um, I'm, I'm the father of two daughters so i know that feeling like if we go somewhere and i feel like that vibe of like something's not right i'm like i'm gonna attack whatever right. and i and i will say james uh former cage fighter and veteran so he is he <laughs> I, you know I, I might still take your father it might be tough to those two but but definitely they are cut from the same cloth uh definitely, definitely. <laughs> when, you, when you're a father of daughters i mean that's the thing is you you are very protective and you're very aware of what's going on around you because i mean yes. you, it's just the instinct that happens that's uh, well and especially yes. in in the in the situation you were in i mean yeah. I can imagine. Yeah, he, he had his, his work cut out for him. Did you utilize the Disney talent, like Disneyland passes? And maybe you didn't have time because they forced you on the road all the time. But if somehow I were a good enough singer that I could be signed to Disney, I'd be spending all day just skipping lines at rides at Disneyland. Okay. And Bro, <laughs> <laughs> I love Disney. Like I am literally... I mean, I'm, I feel like one of the luckiest girls, you know, because of my experience with them and my history with them. They've been so amazing to me and my daughter. Um, we've been to Disneyland multiple times. So the next thing is Disney World, obviously, you know, but, um, but yeah, they've, they've always, you know, given me passes. I mean, at one point, they closed down the park a few <laughs> times for me and my family, wow. you know? And so, yeah. Wow. I, oh. Yeah. I mean, well, I got to say, we all thought it was kind of boring. <laughs> but, <laughs> it's, funny that, you, it, it's funny you mentioned that. I've thought about that when they talked about closing down the park. Like, there's a delicate balance where what you want is it just to be very low attendance. So, right. but like, yeah, right. I could almost be eerie if you're the only ones there. It was weird. It was like, what is this? You know, like, <laughs> can we just open it up and let some people in? But I mean, just to be able to say, you know what? They closed down the park for me and my family to just celebrate and have a good time. I mean, I don't know how many people can say that, but, you know, I feel like, man, I'm honored. I'm honored that I, I got those type of uh, experiences and opportunities. Yeah. And still today, like I said, you know, um, maybe we should all go to Disneyland and uh, I show some mm -hmm. stuff there. <laughs> Listen, I, you save the time, save the time and moment and let us know we are there. Luke will bring his camera and we'll have a blast. We will. You know what? Let's let's put that out there in the universe yeah. because I truly, I'm a blessed girl. I love my people at Disney. Can't believe that uh, some of them are, are still there from my generation there. And um a shout out to Maria, who's a VP there at uh, at the Disney record label. And um, she's been, you know, one of those females as well, I have to say, as, as a Latina, someone that I've been able to look up to because she's a Latina herself. And to have such a 
she's got such an awesome position there at Disney, not just because of her position, but she's such an amazing human, you know? So to have those type of friendships and, and be able to say, Hey, Maria, can I go to Disneyland today? <laughs> you know, she's just totally like, dude, yeah, whatever, you know, so <laughs> a big awesome. shout out to Maria and Maria, we want to go to Disneyland. Maria, I mean, <laughs> Hey, I, I, I love you, Maria, please. We... <laughs> James will sing for you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah James. I'll, I'll do that <laughs> and I'll eat turkey legs for you. Just so hey. I won't, but James will. He will. <laughs> all the turkey legs. I will eat all the turkey legs. <laughs> so Alma, do you have a question for Myra? I do. Um, first, I want to say thank you for paving the way for all the Latina artists. And uh, does your daughter know that you're a Disney princess? <laughs> you know, I, I love this question. Um, thank you. First of all, thank you for, you know, for giving me that credit. I'm, all, I'm so honored to hear that when I hear it. And um, I just, I couldn't be any more proud of being able to kind of carry that through, you know, yeah. I've been able to to talk to girls like Miley herself and Hillary and and to hear the the lovely things that they have to say about just the paving the way in itself uh, they know the type of work that it's been you know it's it's hard work mm -hmm. uh, especially kind of starting things out in anything that you do in life it's kind of like a guinea pig experience in a way so it's a lot more pressure of so many different types and my daughter um i have to say she is my highlight in everything, you know, I, I took a long, long break uh, since I became a mom and I'm just recently now coming back, uh, truly. So, and, and she is the reason why, uh, for a long time, I decided, you know, I'm just going to be a mom. And I mean, that itself is a lot of work and, um, and it's a different world. You know, once you become a parent, it's just your priorities completely change. Mm -hmm. And so, um, coming from the family that I come from families, everything. So hearing from my daughter, um, mom, what are you thinking? Like, you're never going to go back or like, just because you're a mom, you know, you think you don't have it in you anymore. Like, so, and, and so obviously, you know, I feel like she goes around at school and says, well, this is who my mom is, you know, and I think she's really proud and she's almost like a little manager. You know, where <laughs> she tells me like, hey, mom, you better get to stepping because you ain't getting any younger. And you know what oh, I mean? Wow. And like, she, yeah, but she's she's brilliant. Like she's completely she's completely right. And she's super smart. You know, and she's the type of person where I'm like, I must have done something right in my life because here she is at almost 10 years old telling me, hey, mom, you, you can't let go of your dreams. You only live once you know, and so, and your goals and, 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 you know, whatever it is that you set yourself out for, she's like, you can't just stop because you became a mom. So hearing that from her, you know, as a, as a human, as a woman, as a mother, as an artist, I can't tell you how proud it makes me to be her mother. Yeah. She's That's smart. Amazing. She's good. Cause she, I mean, she got you on like, oh, oh you, you're going to challenge me? Let me show you who's still got it, okay? Let's come on. Yes, yes. She's yes. a good manager. Has she seen good. you on screen, like on uh, Max Keebles? She room? has. She actually has. And, and she's the one that, you know, constantly kind of reminds me, like, hey, mom, like, you know, I know you don't like acting, but like, you're good, you know, and you should do more of it. And of course, I'm over here always trying to convince her, like, <laughs> honey, like, I got to do one thing at a time. But she she's big on that. She's big on on reminding me, hey, mom, let's play your video music. So let's play, you know, let's play your, your music videos and your your the movie you were. She loves Max Keeble. She loves mm -hmm. that movie. So, you know, to have that for my daughter where, like, she's so proud. I don't know who's more proud, her or me. It's <laughs> like, we're just, she's my best friend, you know? And, and so to know that Aww. she's, She's that proud to, to watch me on screen or to listen to me sing or to hear a new song. Um, it's it's really an honor. <laughs> that's wonderful. Oh, that's so sweet. That's wonderful. Oh my God, that's so sweet. So I, and I think that's the perfect, that's a perfect note to take our, our, our sponsor, a quick sponsor break. <laughs> this may be the last, we, it turns out that this sponsor may be going out of business soon. So <laughs> buy these items while they can. And I'm not even kidding. So buy them while you can. I don't know how the quick cube didn't sell last time. 
The unofficial Disney Tonight Show is sponsored by Luke's eBay account, LaCoy Collectibles. Educational materials include a chemistry, the molecular nature of matter and change, your ticket to a seat at the periodic table. The Royal <laughs> Diaries, Cleopatra, the seventh daughter of the Nile. If you're not reading this, you're in denial. And for the insomniacs in the insomniacs in your life, the numerical method for engineers. Complete with enough differential equations to knock out a village. Find all your favorite collectibles by searching Luke Tizzle or LaCoy Collectibles on eBay. Now back to you, David. I gotta say, I, I, I'm pretty sure that the person who's most happy about Luke maybe shutting down his eBay business is Mando so she doesn't have to read these tongue twisters anymore that Luke puts for her because uh, those are those are heinous. Uh, but we picked like the hardest them. the hardest books in the world to like to talk about and to read. No one's gonna read those. Like that's not. Hey, you know what? Who doesn't want to read numerical methods for engineers by Raymond <laughs> Canale? I mean, that just sounds amazing. I I like that Luke for the insomniacs in your life. That's great. I thought of you That's when good. I wrote it. I yeah. love that. Yeah, yeah, War, yeah, I like that. All right. What was the transition like for you going from the Disney era and into the next phase of your career? It was hard. It was extremely hard because. I was actually pretty heartbroken with the management team that I had at that time. A lot of things happened, um, legal things where uh, me and my father and my family, you know, didn't know certain things were going on. Um, and so, you know, you live and you learn. I think a lot of us artists go through that at one point or another. And um, it was hard because of that as a young adult, uh, because that's kind of where I was. I was, you know, I'd learned a lot. I'd been through a lot, uh, 15, 16 years old. I was still so focused on where I was going with everything. And I'd been on such a roll, you know, there's so much going on. So I was still looking forward to a lot. And so when that happened, it almost, it forced a big um, break. Oh. I love it when they come in for saying, Thea, I want to see what you're doing. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of just, you know, where I was at with, with that situation, I was super heartbroken. And I wasn't sure if I even wanted to continue because of how heartbroken I was. And, and I got a taste of the reality of um, what the industry was like, you know, and, um, and it wasn't all just peaches and cream. You know, there's a lot of things that you have to go through and learn, um, I guess, the hard way, not, not by choice, but, but because other people become greedy, et cetera you know, and, um, and for whatever reason, they don't think that everybody is entitled to a piece of the pie, you know, so it was really hard. Uh, but as I've said, I've, I've had such a supportive family to kind of guide me through the entire thing. I actually ended up not quitting, not stopping by all means on, on my music and my, my, my singing. I ended up signing a, another record deal um, with EMI. Uh, at the time after Disney and I actually recorded a, an amazing album that was like really like my first real creative project as an artist um, independently as far as the writing of it a lot and so um, I got that experience which was incredible um, but that was kind of another heartbreak in itself I the, the project got shelved and the company didn't continue. And so it was a lot of different things. You know, you just never know what's gonna happen. Uh, but to say the least, I, I got to record more and continue on that. But it's been, it's been a, a wild um, deck of cards, you know, yeah. that, that I've been played. And so- Well, that is the tough thing because there is so much, especially in the music industry, but in, in TV and film also, but there's so much that goes on that's outside of the artist's control. And we kind of think of things now, you know, as like there's YouTube and Spotify and there's all these different ways where people can kind of get their stuff out there. But that, you know, there's still at those higher levels, 
yeah, that you can create a whole album and if they have control over it, they can just not release it or do whatever they want with it. And and then when you have, you know, managers and agents and all these people messing with like, you had this great thing going and then with, and then with your next record deal, you have these things that you're excited about and just these outside forces mess with it. And yeah, at, at that young of an age, I mean, in my, in my thirties, it's hard when deals fall through and right. things don't happen, but like at that age, and especially when you were like, man, this is great. Like, you know, I'm 13, 14, 15, 16, I'm yeah. rolling. And then like, yeah. wait a second, manager, agent record. Why are these people ruining that? I'm a great singer right. and they love right. me. Why are we, why are we stopping? Right. It's a lot of um, politics, a lot of sabotaging, a lot of um, just greed, you know, and, and all that stuff. I can honestly say um, a lot of the money that I was you know, technically supposed to make because of my hard work, et cetera, or my piece of the pie, I could say, I never really saw, you know, and so. That's so common in the music it is, industry. It's so common. It is very common. Um, I have to say that, you know, part of um, my continued inspiration has been, you know, that part of, of the world that we spoke on earlier, uh, as far as like my my purpose, you know, and, and the true miracle of this journey for me being able to, to do something with the gift I was gifted, you know, and give back. I mean, I didn't buy this gift, you know, and I'm not really selling it, but it's been, it's always nice to get paid for work because no matter what you're working your butt off, you know, mm -hmm. and, and you, there's endless days, endless nights, of just hard work and sacrifice so don't, you don't see your mother, your siblings for all this time, et cetera, right? But as far as my my vision and my purpose, um, I still have that and no one can take that away from me, you know? So mainly um, that's why we're still standing. And and at this time, at this age, and with everything that I'm, I'm working on today, I can wholeheartedly say I couldn't be any more proud of where I stand, how I stand. And the fact that, like I said, I have myself full to give and, um, and there's more, you know, there's more coming and there's more to give back. And it's just, it's that part of, of, of who we should be as humans should never be, it should never end, you know? Mm -hmm. So it, it should always be this um, drive of, we're truly only here for a limited time. And, you know, why not build something, not just for our children, right? But, but there's so much more out there that we could be doing to help and to give back. And you know, you know, it's amazing, Maya, you're such an amazing guest. I don't even have to ask one of the questions I normally ask at the end of what gives you purpose, because you've already beautifully answered it throughout the interview. So you're doing my job for me. You're fantastic. <laughs> um, but Mando, Mando, do you have a question for Myra? Yes, I do. But first, I want to just say you have the most beautiful outlook on life. Thank Sorry, you. Mike. It's been it's been tough, you know, but every day, you know, that that I feel like we get this gift of life again. It's a new day. It's a new opportunity. And it's so much to be grateful for. So I just I, I feel that every day wholeheartedly. And, and, you know, I'm, I'm excited to be a part of you know this with you guys and it's and our and our music video forward. that maria is going to facilitate we're going to shoot at disneyland you know we're going to that's it's gonna right. Be great. <laughs> exactly. right so, so what, do, what do you got mando my question is who is the most famous person you have ever met well, I, I she already got a standing ovation from Nelson Mandela. I know that was already answered, but yeah. I wasn't sure. Wait, did you no, did I, you get to meet Nelson Mandela though? Like, did you get to meet I him? I did. Yeah, yes. You know what? Um, the crazy part of it all is that after the show, he came back to my green room. My dad opened the door, and obviously, in awe, you know, my dad was just kind of like speechless. Like, this man is at my door with a thousand bodyguard men right around him and he came and said to my father I just wanted to shake her father's hand and you know it's you so he shook his hand and wow. he didn't even want to meet me he was just <laughs> like I want to shake her dad's hand so you know what it just it made me that much more happy and uh and I guess you know it's a it's a proud moment because it's maybe how I feel today about being a mother I must have done something right and maybe my father felt that then, you know, where he was totally mm -hmm. speechless and he was just like, wow, I can't believe this man just came and shook my hand. 
and said, I wanted to shake Myra's father's hand. Yeah, and that's you know? a great gift that to give amazing. back to your dad after all of the men he beat back away oh. from you over that time. <laughs> I'm just that. My father is a trooper. Like, he is such a sport to go with me around the world to put up with all these kids and all these girls and all these, you know, and hormones. Shaq and Aaron Carter, you know. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and Aaron Carter trying to kiss me, you know, and all right? these I didn't want to ask that. I didn't want to put you in a bad spot, but I was like, <laughs> I guarantee no, no, you, man. your dad had to have some words with Aaron Carter. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, Aaron was, Aaron was always scared of my father. And so not in a, not in a bad way, but more of a res respectful way, you know. And Definitely. He never wanted to disrespect my father because he knew what time it was. <laughs> so there's been a lot of famous people, but the one person that made an impact, you know, on both my father and, and, and myself, I have to say it was, you know, Nelson Mandela. It's just historical. Yeah, no, well, I mean, it, it's good though, Mando, it's good. It's good you asked the question because even though we already knew, we, it led to that wonderful story. Oh, that so, yeah. That was perfect. That, yeah. <laughs> that was fantastic. Definitely. Thank you. Uh, my question's lame now, though, but like compared to like all the cool <laughs> stuff everyone's asked, but if you had to pick a Disney animated character that you would want to write or sing a song for, what character would that be? There's like two different things I'm going on here in my heart as far as all this. But first of all, when I was 13, when I signed my record deal with Disney, I got an opportunity to um, record a part of your world in Spanish for the Latin American movie for The Little Mermaid. And so, you know what, as a kid, I come from a family of five children. I'm the second oldest and I, and, and being the first generation born here in the United States coming with, you know, I have immigrant parents and um, we didn't have much growing up. And so my only toy growing up was a little mermaid that uh, wasn't even truly a Barbie because she had a tail, right? And um, she had a cord. So you, you know, you pulled the cord and she sang part of your world. And so for me, it really, it truly didn't hit me until a few months after the recording of, of that song, but it truly, it made me cry, you know, as, as a young kid, um, just kind of reflecting on my story along with my families and, and knowing, you know, where we come from and how hard we've always worked and how I was instilled that, I'm allowed to be a dreamer. I'm allowed to, you know, set some goals up. And honestly, we're in such a beautiful country. As hard as things may seem sometimes, we are in such a beautiful country where there's opportunity to say the least to the max, you know? And so realizing that I had come from where I would come from and eventually being a part of such a big movie and, and to look back and think, man, that was the only toy I really had as a kid growing up that I still cherish till today. And, um, and I got the chance to be that that's crazy. girl yeah. in oh, that that's movie crazy. for that's the right. Latin movie. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So crazy. for me, that was huge. It was, it's basically like, I did it. I done did that. And so, <laughs> but, but as far as like being on another project where I could say, man, my favorite character um, in the Disney scene is Winnie the Pooh because she <laughs> is a true character and she's real. And so I have this history with Winnie Pooh where I used to go to Winnipeg, Winnipeg, which is a town in Canada named after Win Winnie the Pooh. And, um, and there's a friendship festival there every year in August. And it's, it's a tribute to Winnie the Pooh. And so I'm in love with her because of her story. Um, you know, I feel like she doesn't get enough credit. She's a girl. She's not a boy. Um, and her story is beautiful. And so she was a real bear. And I would love to uh, one day, I don't know, write a song maybe or be a part of something with with Maria, that character. Maria, come on, let's get <laughs> Maria, where you at? Mariachi <laughs> style. I actually, I, you know, yes! what, 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 there you go. and I will say, on Myra's YouTube page, she did a Q&A and she That's wore right. the most amazing <laughs> Winnie the Pooh outfit I've ever seen in my life with like Winnie the Pooh stuffed animals with it's That's spectacular. Great. If we do shoot a music video there, I mean, you have to wear that. I mean, it's it really- I'm a huge fan. I've collected Winnie Pooh since I was a little girl and I've been gifted 
these amazing gifts, collector items from Disney themselves, you know? So I'm just like, uh, what a lucky kid I've been, you know, I couldn't complain no matter what. You know, that's funny. I never (laughs) thought about that, but Winnie is typically (laughs) a girl's name and, and the voice is very deep and difficult to ascertain but was it like the original stories to be honest i've never asked uh maria i'm gonna call you um (laughs) i just you know but it's i'm curious because um one of my sisters has a really deep voice like who knows it could be that we all misunderstood and we're thinking it's a boy (laughs) yeah (laughs) well and also it's tough because when he's a bear so you know it's hard it's hard even then because maybe in the bear world that's a very a falsetto i mean who knows bears have a deep roar so if you compare that voice with a roar i mean that's so you know what but i i did always i always thought of winnie the pooh as kind of like a gender like there i didn't right but now that you but now that you say it winnie i've i've only met women named winnie yeah. spelled that way so yeah. we we're breaking news here on the unofficial <laughs> disney tonight show the funny thing uh, is, we are is putting it all, all out <laughs> yeah <laughs> on my tiktok i have like a really big winnie the pooh and i always dress him up with like big hoop earrings and like jewelry <laughs> maxed out and i put these big elton john sunglasses on nice. him oh, i love it <laughs> I love it. We're going to do the Q&A in just a moment. First, we're going to do our quick uh, Disney Pivo questions. What is your favorite ride at the Disney parks? My favorite rides, I'm a roller coaster girl. So yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I love all the roller coasters. Um, at Disney World, I do have to say I have an actual favorite ride, which is I want to say it's called the Rock and Roll. Is it like yeah, the Hall of Fame? Oh, the Aerosmith Rock and Roller Coaster. Coaster. Yeah, Rock and, yes. rock and Roller Coaster. I co- yeah. love that thing. Like, I could go on it over and over and over again. Not to mention, <laughs> they have like a, a huge picture of me on your way in. So I'm just like, oh, that's me. Yes, we're going Roller Coaster. Oh, wow. <laughs> I've, never, I've never I've never ridden that ride. I've only been to Disneyland. Yeah. We're going to so, have to Luke, investigate that now. Yeah. Luke, that, and that's, Luke, that's your favorite roller coaster, right? Yes. And, and I want to say that this is the best answer that we've had from a guest so far with with the rides <laughs> it's true yeah so far we've had uh the bench in front of the castle we've had it's a small world no. uh, we've had no. storybook Thank canal it's, it, but that's awesome that you have a picture a, a big picture in that ride that's amazing well mm-hmm. mando next time you go uh you got to get a you got to get a selfie in front of that and, yeah uh, I will. It. okay what is your least favorite ride at the Disney Park? I, I think it's Small World. I just yes! Can't do yes. I can't do it. Like you can't pay me to go on that ride. <laughs> yeah. It's very polarizing. Small I'm redeemed. World is a, is a love it or hate it. I actually love It's a Small World. I'm it outnumbered on it. this. Alma, are you with me on It's a Small World? No, I, I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, also right, I'm on an island here. I am on an island. I'm on that little island. That right little there. island. <laughs> Stay on that island and don't ride yeah. that ride anymore. Right. I love that one. But it has to be uh, part of the music video. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's like just David trying everyone... to get us all to go on the ride and we're like, yeah. No. yeah. We're all just like dead stone and then David's just like, no. <laughs> and by the way, James, I love James. I would never have the guts like to do it but James like the moment he met Myra he's like all right can you sing for us <laughs> and I was like but uh yeah. but she's but she, I, asked pol- so, I asked politely no, he, I, yeah, asked I, was, polite. I, I played it up I will say I played it James was very polite uh but do you do you want to just drop a few bars uh I, I'm hey. now going to put you on the spot like James did because you're an of amazing course. singer and we would be Aww. we would be very better we'll, we'll be better you. off from hearing your voice so thank you so much of course I can't imagine living my life without you now not ever having you around we found a way out don't have to look back to realize how far we've come. There are a million reasons 
I'm looking up. I don't want this to end. Beautiful. Yes. Beautiful. Yes. yes. Thank Maria. You guys. Maria, let's do it. Come on now. Absolutely totally. beautiful. That was wonderful. Thank I'm you. I'm not so crying. Much. I'm not crying. No, you, got, you, got him twice. you got him twice. You, you've melted, you've melted that tough punisher no. heart. And and uh that's beautiful. Well, thank Lovely. you. So we are we are now going to uh, close on our on our audience Q and A. Uh, Randy asks, "What is your favorite mariachi song to sing?" Oh my God, Randy, I love you. Um, <laughs> so I have so many. Um, see, that's the thing. Like you can't ask a Latina like what her favorite salsa is, what her favorite mariachi song is, uh, even what her favorite Disney song is. <laughs> um, <laughs> But I do, I have a few. I love like the, I don't know if, you know, Randy, if you're familiar with like the classic songs of like Cello Silva, but I grew up with my mother singing that. My mother has a beautiful voice, by the way. And I grew up listening to her sing uh, songs from Cello. I have to sing a clip just because I'm just, now you guys got me going. Now I'm warmed oh, no, up. Please. Oh, please. Oh, God. Where's the tequila at? <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I'll sing something that I, I like from cello. Um, que te las voy a pagar, andas diciendo por ahí lo que por mí tú sufriste. Que te quieres desquitar y de alguna forma cobrar lo que por mí tú perdiste. That's just a little piece, Beautiful. but there yeah. you go, Randy. <laughs> No, that was that wow. was amazing. And and wow. Luke, growing up as a young boy in Canada, you sang the same one. So Luke, do you want to do, do your rendition as well? I'll, I'll pass this time, but it's okay. uh, right. she did that it was so a, that well. was a very popular one. Yeah. yeah you, you, all right, uh, Amanda, you want to take the next one? Yep. This is from Allison. She said, I was six when the Princess Diaries came out, and I have such happy memories of singing and dancing along with you. Was there a moment when you realized how popular Miracles Happens was, and it still is? I truly have to say that this song has made me realize what a connection I and the song have as far as, as uh, me as a human and what the song means and what it, the message, the message that it truly has. Every time I hear it now, it's just like, it hits me, you know, and, and I've heard for a lot of people it's either like an anthem, whether they're going through a hard time or they're fighting chemo or, you know, just so many different things, so many different stories that I've heard with the song. And every single time it just, it touches my heart and it just, it makes me so happy to know that I was able to do this song and it truly represents the person that I am because at the end of the day, like I've told you guys, um, that's kind of what I live for, you know, and, and to know that I have this song out there that has touched a lot of people's hearts and continues to do that um, in one way or another. It just, it truly gives me that much more purpose to continue, you know? And so um, we got to release more songs like this, I feel, um, that not only feel good, but just have such a wonderful message. And um, with that being said, um, Allison and everybody, you, you know, as well as you guys, um, I have new music coming and I've yeah. been working on, on the music. Uh, this that was, that was going to be my next question. Uh, <laughs> do, you, what, do you have any projects you're excited about other than our amazing film shoot that Maria is going to show? Yeah, that's right. I do. I have a, an incredible team around me today. Uh, I'm really proud. I'm really excited. Um, I'm also engaged. I just got engaged. Wow. So thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm really excited. I mean, along with, with my family, my daughter and, and my fiance, um, the people around me, I also have to, you know, give a big shout out to, to my brother, Kay and Ray, um, Hermosas, which is another project that I'm working on. Um, it's, it's all kind of coming along together. It's falling into place. Um, always representing, you know, my culture, uh, being Mexican American and, and being super proud of that. Uh, the new music that I'm working on has this sound that I couldn't be any more pleased with. I can't wait to share it with you guys, actually. And we're making plans right now for the video as well as the, the drop date. Um, so I can tell you as of now, I had a big meeting yesterday. Uh, as of now, 
we do know that come May, we will be having new music out mm. and along mm. with the new, you know, music video attached to Long. So, yeah, nice. I'm really excited. That's awesome. Congratulations. So music video. Thank you. Music yeah. video. <laughs> <laughs> At Disney. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Yeah, I That's mean, incredible. we're getting ready for a lot and um, there's a lot of planning right now. There's a lot of music being created. It's been a whole year of creating music, but more so than anything, finding a direction and really pinpointing where we're going. Now that we have it, we just recently found it. I'm so happy with it. Um, it's like my new baby, you know? So mm -hmm. we are working really hard on it. And so I'm excited to announce that the, the first song we will be releasing is called La Llave, uh, which is the key. And so, um, so you guys gotta stay tuned to know yeah. what's coming and yeah. and i can't wait I'll, I'll actually send you guys the song as soon as i'm ready please to do. share it awesome. yeah, yeah and please you guys do we'd can, love to hear it yeah play and, it, and, of course. and definitely check out myra on instagram and facebook uh official myra music is the handle for those and then youtube myra official music do i have those correct you do. I'm, I'm also, I didn't mention too much of, of this project, but I'm working uh, with uh, a company called Hermosas uh, USA. And we're just a bunch of Latinas, you know, Mexican American, all different types of Latino, you know, Latina cultures, um, whether it be Dominican, Cuban, uh, Puerto Rican, Mexicanas. Um, I mean, there's just so many, you know, different cultures, uh, but we're all Latina based and um, we speak on on culture and education and uh, you know fashion, music, um, makeup and just pretty much everything a Latina girl is you know and just a girl in general. So awesome. tap into that uh, at yeah. Mosas USA uh, on Instagram and we're we're getting ready to launch a, a lot of things through there as well and pretty exciting for me something i'm nice. proud of really really there's proud a big, of there's, the amazing. myra industry is strong see <laughs> your daughter she's she challenged you and now you're taking over the world so that's wonderful you know it's really been great the, all these different experiences at this age and coming back and you know, like i said being a part of it as a creative director has been something new for me different um, and just all these other different projects that are going on. Um, really, really excited about. So definitely stay tuned. Yeah. I'm going to be greedy here one more time. Okay. Can we get a sneak peek of that song? Is oh, I don't know if she can do that. Did that man any any of it? Can you sing any of it? I don't, <laughs> I don't know. know. I'm just, just sue, I, 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 you know what, I'm just, James? I'm just being you know, sneaky. You know what, James? You're asking for a bit much, but I like you. I like you. Just a tiny piece. A tiny piece. Te doy la llave de mi corazón, puedes entrar y despertar. So you got to wait for the rest. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. But it's yeah. both English and Spanish, and you guys will be able to, you know, to get the sense of, of, of both English and Spanish. Yeah, which you, I'm really you, proud of. You got to watch out for James, because pretty soon he'll be like, uh, so the next three weeks I want to spend at Disneyland and <laughs> right. maybe a room at the Grand Californian. No, and no. could you sing? <laughs> Could you sing my family and I to sleep every night as we're there? That might do. That I might actually do. Oh, man. No, but that, that's fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank so you. follow Myra on all those different handles and channels. Follow us. Subscribe uh, to the Disney Tonight Show on YouTube, on all the podcast apps, on Instagram at Disney Tonight Show. Um, follow all the handles, both Myra and us. It helps us a lot, genuinely. If you don't know, that's how they track basically everything these days. So that really helps us. It helps her. You can already tell if you've gotten this far, you know she's a wonderful human being. So you should definitely support her. Uh, thank you so much, Myra, for joining us. We are the unofficial Disney Tonight Show. See you soon. <laughs>